Good day, Math 30 ones Last day we were introduced to the idea of angles as trig and the idea of what a radian is. So we continue that discussion talking about um, a circle, a structure that's kind of created to help organize all of our ratios and all of our angles um, in both radians and degrees. And this uses a little bit of symmetry and patterns to create this. But the idea of the unit circle is to hopefully make our lives a little bit easier. So a quick reminder of, um, of sine, cosine, and tangent. We talked about sine in grade 10 as being the opposite over the hypotenuse. We talked about cosine as being the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And we talked about tangent as being the opposite over the adjacent and there's nothing new with that. Um, this kind of got us to think about the cast rule and to talk about when things are positive or negative. You know, as we rotate around 360 degrees, things start to change when we deal with positive lengths and negative lengths. So you can imagine if there was a triangle here, the opposite side would be positive, the adjacent side would be positive, the hypotenuse, in fact, the, the length of the terminal arm will always be a positive. So what is positive? sine, cos, and tan, they are in fact all positive. If there were a triangle drawn in quadrant 2, you would see a negative length in the x direction, which creates negative adjacent, positive opposite, and of course a positive terminal arm. Now, the only question to ask is which one or ones would be positive in this quadrant? Opposite adjacent, not tan, um, adjacent hypotenuse, not cosine. In fact, it's opposite over hypotenuse. Sine is the only one that's positive. You might see where I'm going if you remember the conversation from grade 11, but we have an opposite side that's negative, an adjacent that's negative, and the, referen uh, the terminal arm will always be positive. So we have an opposite over adjacent. That's actually a tan that's positive because negative divided by negative. And in the bottom right, in the fourth quadrant, we have a negative y value coming down here, positive x, positive terminal arm, and it's the adjacent over the hypotenuse that creates this, um, this positive cosine value. So this is where CAST cast comes from. It tells you when your ratio will be positive. And here's a bit of a visual other than just saying, you know, sine of 150 and saying whether it's positive or negative. The big fact of the day is talking about the equation of a circle. Uh, the equation of a circle is defined as x squared plus y squared equals r squared. A circle is in fact made up of a whole bunch of points. And this would go all the way around. I'm not talking about inside of a circle or outside of a circle. I'm talking about on the arc of a circle is defined points. Now, every circle has an equation x squared plus y squared is r squared. So for a circle with a radius of 3, you would see x squared plus y squared equals 3 squared. You would see a 9, and we're supposed to be able to see that this is actually x squared plus y squared is 3 squared, and the radius is a 3. So be careful when you see something like a 9 or a 16 or a 25, or maybe even a number like 20, that it's the root of that number that makes the radius. Now in this course, we're going to talk about a very specific circle, one with a radius of 1. This is called a unit circle. And this is the most important one so that your terminal arm has a length of 1, and this terminal arm will rotate around. If we do have a radius of 1, it allows for some very helpful tricks. A quick example, and we're only going to do one of these. If I were to ask to determine a point on the unit circle with an x-coordinate of 1 half, remember the terminal arm has a length of 1. So if I were to say this is 1, where is an x value of 1 half? Probably somewhere in the middle there. If we were to travel directly up, and I guess down, there should be two answers to where the x value is 1 half. This is not a function, this is a relation. There's actually two outputs for that one input. So we get to say x squared plus y squared is 
1 squared, or 1, for the unit circle. This is called the unit circle. We plug in an x value of 1, ha of one half and ask what is the y value. We have a 1 quarter which we can subtract over to the other side. Now you might need to use your calculator if you feel less confident with the fractions, but 1 is technically a 4 divided by a 4. I made a common denominator so I can subtract these together to get 4 over 4 minus 1 over 4 is 3 over 4. And if we square root both sides, we do have a positive or negative and a giant square root of 3 over 4. What we can do with this is separate these radicals because the square root of 3 is not very impressive, but the square root of 4 on the bottom is a regular 2. So I could actually define a coordinate location 1 half and then a positive y value, root 3 over 2, and a positive 1 half comma negative root 3 over 2. I could even go so far as to define a terminal arm of length 1 and start to ask questions about angles and triangles and how they relate to coordinate locations. That might seem a little bit strange why I would talk about angles and coordinate locations at the moment, but uh, let's try to bridge that gap and make it make sense. As a reminder, we do have some special triangles that are defined as having a 30 and a 60 and a 90 degree angle in them. Another one with a 45, 45, and a 90. So these were defined and created from isosceles or equilateral triangles. And at this point, you probably don't remember them, but the special triangle with a 30 and a 60 and a 90 had a, um, had a 2 for the hypotenuse. And then there was either a 1 or a square root of 3. Across from the big angle is the big value. Across from the small angle is the small value. There was a root 2 for the isosceles triangle and a pair of 1s for the legs. And these were on your formula sheet in 20-1, and these would have been probably um, needed in many questions. We're actually going to modify these triangles a little bit from last year to this year to make them a little bit more meaningful. But it's important as we take those triangles to be able to deal with why 30, why 60, why 45, why were those triangles special? Well, we talked in the last day about radians and we talked about those angles. You know, if I were to say 30 degrees, could you say, well, that's pi over 6? If I said add another pi over 6, could you say 2 pi over 6 or pi over 3? And then 3 pi over 6. 4 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, and keep adding your way around. And I'll do this one very, very quickly. 6 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, 8 pi over 6, 9 pi over 6. The hope is that you eventually get fast enough that you could do this without too much thought. But as you rotate around, those are your values. 30, 60, 90, and so on, every multiple of 30, every technically multiple of 60. There's also 45 degrees, a pi over 4, a 2 pi over 4, a 3 pi over 4, a 4 pi over 4, a 5 pi over 4, a 6 pi over 4, a 7 pi over 4, and lastly your 8 pi over 4. So what we're going to do is take these angles, we're going to take these triangles and put them all together. So what I'm going to do is take the special triangles and put them on the unit circle. So I'm going to take the 30, 60, 90 degree triangle first. These are both the same one. One's just tilted on its side. But I'm going to take the one with the 30 and I'm going to redraw this scaled down. What I'm going to want is for the hypotenuse to be a length of 1. So I'm going to take this and take this and take this and divide every length by 2. What you're going to see is a 2 divided by 2, root 3 divided by 2, and a 1 divided by 2. You're going to see a 
2 divided by 2, a 1 divided by 2, and a root 3 divided by 2. These are the same if the triangle were to be tilted over. Across from the 30 degrees is the smaller 1 half, across from the 60 is the root 3 over 2. So why would we scale this triangle down? Well, I've already defined on this unit circle, I've already talked about there being a radius of 1. What I want to be able to do is take this triangle and slide it down onto here so that we could say radius is 1, the x value is root 3 over 2, the y value is 1 half, and actually define a coordinate location, root 3 over 2, comma 1 half. I want to be able to take this triangle, slide it down here so that there's a 60 degree angle, and instead of drawing the triangle, I'm going to only define the x value, y value. The x value is 1 half, and the y value is root 3 over 2. These are two coordinate locations based on the 30 degree and the 60 degree reference angles. There's a reason for this, and this is based on the x value as being your adjacent side from theta, adjacent side, and the y value being your opposite side. If I were to say in this triangle, which is technically both of these triangles, what is cosine's ratio? You would say it's the adjacent over the hypotenuse. You would say x over 1. You might just say cosine is x. On the unit circle, cosine is x. You might say for sine, opposite over hypotenuse, that sine is y over 1. Sine is y on the unit circle. So if I were to ask you a question like, what is cosine of 30 degrees? You're supposed to say cosine is the x value. And if you type in cos of 30, root 3 over 2 comes out. You'll see this as a decimal, 0 0.866. But you're seeing the ratios come out as these values, as these coordinate locations. We could keep rotating around with these values and say here is 150 degrees, which is basically this triangle. being redrawn over here. It's technically the exact same root 3 over 2. It's the same 1 half. Technically, this is a negative root 3 over 2. So I might say the x value is a negative root 3 over 2, and the y value is a 1 half. But really, I'm just taking this coordinate location and drawing it over here. I could do the same thing with the 60 and say this point is the same point as over here because it's the same x value and y value but maybe the x value needs to be negative. So now I actually know um, 30, 60, 120, and 150. Questions that could be asked are things like, what is sine of 150 degrees? Sine is the y value right here. So in your calculator, type in sine of 150, and 1 half comes out. Type in cos of 150, and a negative 0 0.866 comes out. And this is the exact value. So we're at this point being asked for exact values based on 30, 60, 120, and 150. Now these triangles could keep being rotated around. Here is 210 degrees, a 30 degree reference angle, which gets the same coordinate location, a root 3 over 2 and a 1 half. Once again, x value is negative, y value is down negative. For 210, 240, we have the 60 degree reference angle with a 1 half and a root 3 over 2. Again, both x and y values are negative. For 240, 270, 300 degrees, 60 degree reference angle. We're basically redrawing all these as we work our way around. x value is positive, y value is negative, and for 330 degrees, I'm copying the 30 degree reference angle, root 3 over 2, 1 half, the y is negative, and we have a whole bunch of answers now to sine and cos of 30, 60, 120, 150, 210, 240, 300, 330 degrees. In fact, there's also some terminal arms we could define at the 90, 180, 270, and 0, or 360. This coordinate location is 1 to the right, 0 up and down. 0 left and right, 1 up, negative 1 left, 0 up and down, 
zero left and right, one down. So if you were to type in sine of 270 degrees, negative one, the y value would come out. So if you remember the very, very first 30 degree angle, you can switch them to get the 60 degree angle and you could continue to copy paste those values around being careful with your x and y values um, and this is not so intensive to create. There is one more with a 45 degree rotation and this is taking your 45 degree triangle and taking your 1, 1 and a hypotenuse that's a root 2 and dividing all three legs by all three sides by root 2 and get 1, 1 divided by root 2, and 1 divided by root 2. So 1 for the radius, 1 over root 2, and a 1 over root 2. I'll mention this right now, but this will come up a little bit later. You can also see 1 divided by root 2 as its rationalized form. If you times the top and bottom by a root 2, you could see root 2 divided by regular 2. You could see either of those values in this position. So you might see 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2 in the textbook as a coordinate location. You might also see root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2 in that position. And they are mathematically the same thing. In your calculator they'll both say 0 0.7071. So we copy paste with an x value that's negative, y value that's positive, x value that's negative, y value that's negative, x value that's positive, y value that's negative. So in your calculator, if you were to type in, um, let's say, sine of 315 degrees, sine is the y value negative 0 0.7071 comes out, or an, as an exact value, negative 1 over root 2, or negative root 2 over 2. The plan for tomorrow is to interpret and understand how to make one perfect unit circle and interpret. So questions like this start to come out. What is the location of 1 half negative root 3 over 2? Eventually our goal needs to say, well if the x value is positive, we're on the right side. If the y value is negative, we're in the bottom right. So somewhere is our terminal arm. And if our x value is small and our y value is large, this has to define a 60 degree reference angle, which says in standard position, 300 degrees is the location with this, with this spot. So x value of 1 half, y value is negative root 3 over 2, that is what we got. There needs to be a lot of reasoning that goes into these questions to make sense, so our comfort with the unit circle is of utmost importance. Where is the x value negative 1? y value is 0, that's at 180 degrees. For now I'm answering in rate in degrees, but the eventual answer you might need to say is not 60, but maybe you have to say the reference angle is pi over 3, and maybe instead of 300 degrees, you have to say 5 pi over 3. Our mindset needs to shift again and be able to work in radians just as well as degrees. That is 4.2 beginning the unit circle. Next day we look at trigonometric ratios and trying to interpret and apply the unit circle. Good luck.